unfortunately contracted leukemia in 1998 and passed away. And I stayed with him by his side until he, he died. And after that, I decided to go on and represent America because my father told me that I am just as American as everyone else. And when I went abroad in the foreign service to every single country I went to, to Russia, to China, to Iraq, to Israel, I told people that I'm American and Indian because I'm proud of both. But recently, I've been very concerned about my country, about America. And I, I think you all know what we're talking about. There is an anti-immigrant sentiment rising in the United States right now. You, you know about it. Hopefully that's not a cheer for anti-immigrant sentiment. But you, it, it is very serious. It is very serious. And some people have asked me, they said, well, this doesn't affect you because you're not Mexican or you're not Muslim. There was a white supremacist rally in Charlottesville in 2016, last year. Does anybody remember? In Kansas City, a man with my name, the name Srinivas, was murdered because people thought he was from another country. This is what's happening in our country right now. We also know, does that, is anybody here have an H-1B visa or know somebody in their family with an H-1B visa or have someone in their company with an H-1B visa? We know that that anti-immigrant sentiment is threatening our entire way of life. Because someone right now on an H-1B visa, if they want to become an American citizen, a child born in Europe tomorrow will probably become an American citizen before the Indian who has an H-1B visa right now. We know that this doesn't make sense. We know that we are an immigrant nation in this country. It doesn't matter whether you immigrated here in 1969 or the 1600s. We are all immigrants in America. That is the character of our country, and that's what we should stand up for. Now, there's a saying that if you're not at the table, you are on the menu. We are represented in the sciences. We are represented in business. But we are not represented in government enough. We need representation in order to make sure that our families, our livelihoods are not being threatened. One of my mentors, Roger Krishnamurthy, he told me that we should be proud every single day to be Indian and American. And another one that was mentioned, Senator Kamala Harris, who may become the first ever Indian American elected president of the United States, she told me that we should always stand up. We should always be proud. We right now have four Indian American members of Congress, but we need more. So what can we do? What can all of us do right here? The first thing we can do is we can take advantage. When we become citizens, we have the right to vote. <laughs> In our district, four years ago, only 6% of the people coming out to vote were Asian American. We got that up this year to 28%, the highest ever in our district, Asian Americans coming out to vote. And with your support, next year I can become the first Indian American ever elected from the state of Texas. Thank you so much. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Please.